from the LiveX studios in New York City, Cheesehead TV brings you two guys who like to think they know something about football. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Packer Transplants Live. I am Aaron Nagler, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Corey Banky, my partner here at Cheesehead TV. I'm coming to you live from the Cheesehead TV podcast studio in Midtown Manhattan. Corey joins us live from Green Bay, Wisconsin, across the street from Lambeau Field. And we are ready to talk some Packers. What do we have on tap today, Corey? Today, we put on another game in the W column and get ready for a trip to London to watch the Packers take on the Giants. But right now, it's time for the good, the bad, and the ugly. We got the good, we got. Rashawn Bain Gary. We got the bad. We got Joe Lightbox Barry. We got the ugly. We got a Rogers pick six in this economy. Can't handle that, Banky. Cannot handle that. Yeah, well, inflation is high and uh, recession is coming. So, you know, <laughs> got to get a Rogers pick six in. Got to got to get it in the bloodstream. How you doing, Banky? How's your uh, Tuesday, good. special Tuesday edition of Packer Transplants? How you doing? Good. Getting ready for uh, London, leaving tomorrow for London, and you're you're just following me. You're just following me. I'm like, uh, like about 24 hours behind along. you. Yep. Too. Okay. Oh. Is that just – I guess – I can I just say real quickly, it's absolutely amazing that we're going to London. And I got to thank you because, you know, you didn't need to go all in like you are with Cheesehead TV going to London, but you did. And I really yeah. appreciate it because I'm really excited. Um, well, I'm very excited. I had to change my, my return trip, and I don't even want to talk about how many miles that it's going to cost me. But, you know, Dude. Nagler, I'm going to be sitting. It's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. We're going to have fun. And, uh, you know, potentially we're going to be doing a watch party for the Jets game. I'll be in Japan during that. So we were In talking Japan. About that Corey Banky is going to be live oh, from Lord. Japan in the middle of the damn night. And I'm going to be in Green Bay. That's the weird part. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be very depressed because this is going to be the first time in seven years that I'm going to miss a Packers home game in Lambeau. That's nuts, dude. But that speaks to the oh, yeah. importance of the trip, I would say. But we are off topic already. We all know we got to start one place and one place only. True. Ladies and gentlemen, I haven't even, it's I haven't time. seen this clip. I'm excited. It is time for the hotness. For the hotness. That's right. Look, look, there are always plenty of great clips you could choose, great moments, great narratives, what have you. Something that escaped my attention during the watch party when we saw this live, but I absolutely was mesmerized by when I watched it back, was this clip. You've seen the Romeo Dobbs TD, but I want people to pay attention to what happens just after it. Uh, if we could roll this clip, Romeo Dobbs, back shoulder. Now, first of all, what an adjustment from the rookie. Look at this from Rodgers. Now, like, slow it down a little bit. We'll just, just jump up, 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 Now, he does what he does here. Catches perfect. And now watch this. Watch this spin. What? Like a gangster. He's just like, that's a touchdown. What's up? That's so hot. I love it. I love that. That's somebody who's like, I've done this a million times. Even though it's like, you know, back shoulder touchdown from Aaron Rodgers. But he's just like, nothing. Spin the ball. Touchdown. Hotness, people. That is some hotness. I'm all about it. Uh, we got to get to the Packers news, Corey. We, there's always news. Always stuff percolating. Mm -hmm. uh, starting with uh, this nugget, which I found fascinating. Would have been nice to get this a few weeks ago if the Packers hadn't blown it in Minnesota. But this win over the Patriots that we just witnessed on Sunday yeah. moves the yep. Packers into a tie with the Chicago Bears for all-time wins. That's right. What? The wins in the history, the entirety of the league. What? The Bears had always been ahead of the Packers, but they are now <laughs> tied at 785. Because Hilarious. the Bears lost and the Packers won on Sunday, they are now tied. 
So now, obviously, we just need one more win and the Bears to lose for the Packers to take the lead all time. Uh, that's I'm that's just, exciting. You know, again, the Bears still suck. So there you go. You know what? Um, you know what? I'm, you know what I'm drinking over here? Look, look, at, that. look at that. That's what I'm talking about. That's yeah. what I'm talking about, sir. Yeah, let's go. Salud, let's brother. Let's go. All-time winners. <laughs> Drink, carry the G. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely correct. Um, we just watched Romeo Dobbs score a touchdown. He is the first Packers rookie wide receiver to score a touchdown in consecutive weeks since 2006. 2006. Do you know who did it? you know who did it in 2006? Who was a rookie in 2006? I don't. <laughs> it was Greg Jennings. He's the first would, rookie Packers guess wide Jennings. receiver. I was going to guess Javon Walker, but that was a little earlier, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, it was. But that's not, not a crazy guess. Um, but yeah, first time since Greg Jennings' rookie year that a Packers wide receiver has scored a touchdown in back-to-back -back weeks. That's pretty phenomenal. That's good company you know, this to keep is, right there. This is, this is going to be the third time on this show where I'm going to say something where – I remember on the first Packer transplants, I believe one of my predictions was Romeo Dobbs is going to take first, first number one wide receiver number, number one. one wide receiver. One hundred percent. Got a lot of shade for that. I got a lot of yeah. You don't know what Not you're talking me. about. Kind of, kind of the same me. thing I get. Kind of the same thing I get when I tell radio guys it's going to be forty-five zero. They just look at me like, ha ha, you're funny. <laughs> I will say though, now you're making me want to go back and watch that segment just so I can. Call some of the you other can, predictions you, you can, made. You like, can see you the scowl your hat on, on your face. One... You can see the no, scowl on your face on that. that you're going to pull. Hardly. I was in on that prediction. I agreed, man. I thought he was great all camp. Uh, I don't think that's a crazy prediction. I mean, I just want to know. He's good in camp, and then they keep being good. Right. Though. And it's rare. Being it's good. very rare. Uh, I just want to know what other predictions you made that you are clearly ignoring. I, don't think, I think that was my only prediction. I think oh, that's okay. how well, much that's of a, good. I think that, you know, that 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 show, that was a only strongly, my only prediction. That conviction was held. You I put it, it out there happen. and you know what? I'm not going to let anybody forget it. You know that Nagler cuz I'm I'm pettier oh, than Aaron Rodgers. Oh, you know. should put that on a shirt. I'm pettier than this Aaron Rodgers by so a mile. True. So I will I never forget that kind of stuff. You know, that is if very, I was actually if I thought I was an expert like some people, I'm not going to name right. because I always keep naming this person. I don't know why. Because <laughs> this person says, "Oh God, it but took us I what was... seven minutes? It only took seven minutes. That's good. Well <laughs> if done." I was. Uh, I think my grad glasses are crooked. If I was, I would. I would. What do you? You toot your own horn, or you tout your own? Tout, horn? I think you toot tout your yourself. Own horn. Well, you toot your own horn, or you tout your yeah. accomplishment. Like whichever, you would do that. Yeah, I would be a. I would be a bigger touter. I would be a bigger touter than than a I bigger am. Bigger touter. I'm... I like it. Well, big tout. Um, some other exciting news, and this is tangentially practice squad related, although not Packers practice oh, squad dear. related, because the Packers signed a linebacker off of someone else's practice squad. That's right. Linebacker Eric Wilson got signed today by the Packers. Uh, former Viking, actually. He's played a couple different teams. I will say, though, someone reminded me on Twitter, yeah. he did play for the Vikings, and he always played well against us. So nice to have him on the side of the, the right and the good. Um, <sighs> Clearly, this is probably most likely about bolstering special teams. Uh, another guy who's played a lot on special teams wherever he's been and has pretty, been pretty damn good at it. So welcome to the green and gold, Mr. Eric Wilson. Uh, then, I don't know, Corey, I don't know if you heard. This is news, you know, since it's the first time it's happened ever. Uh, the Packers are traveling to London for a regular season game. How about them apples? First time ever, the Packers going to london to take on the giants i'm just going to keep talking until we get the picture up there it is there you go look at that look at that come you know on i had many, to feature that That's do you so know dope. how many people i talked to in a meeting today and they were like so wait what are you going to london for <laughs> uh have you ever heard about this team they're called the green bay packers yeah <laughs> i kind of like them You're going to london and i love it to be in london so i uh I'm going to london I, I was like I was like a little bit wasted on uh, Sunday night, and it was really funny. Like after the show, and um, right. and people were like, people were like, "You're going to London? That's so exciting!" I'm like, "Well, I do run the largest Green, Green Bay Packer fan site in the world," and one of my friends Fair was point. like, "I hate you." I, like, <laughs> I know I'm a douchebag. I'm sorry. Uh, hardly, all these, all hardly. These all these all these bloggers are wearing off on me. 
all these uh, bloggy that's bloggers, cold, man. That's bloggers, bloggy all the all the that's, Bob that's McGinn cold. bloggers are wearing off on me. That's cold, man. Um, I love this factoid. Uh, the Packers have been, or the, not the Packers, the NFL has been going to London for regular season games since 2007, and they have never ever had a game that featured two teams with winning records. Wow. Sunday will be the first time that's happened since 2007. I mean, it makes sense when you always send the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> this is fair. Someone said that on Twitter, and I'm like, yep, that like, does make sense. It makes sense make sense when you send shitty teams that you don't care about that you're just like, ah, Jacksonville. But, but yeah, get so over you there. say that, but to that point, everyone else has gone at this point. Only the Packers have not gone, and still they haven't sent two teams with a winning record yet. I mean, that's crazy. you know what? That's you crazy. know, the, the Packers and the Giants, people are going to dispute this, but honestly, uh, more so than the Packers and the Bears, the Packers and the Giants are the two most historic teams in the NFL. So it makes sense. I think they're two of the most important teams. There's no doubt about it. When you talk about the history of the league, and I mean, they're, they're, they've got such a great You have to have those two teams to have the NFL. Yes. You can literally to tell have, the story can, of the NFL. You can yes. have, you right. can have no other team or a complete roster of different teams, and it doesn't change as right. long as you have the Packers Giants. You still keep that alternate reality. Well, it's just crazy to me. I just love the fact that with you know the pipeline from the Giants and Lombardi being the offensive coordinator to Green Bay and getting to Green Bay and Lombardi creating what he created in the 60s. I mean, it's just, I love that. I love that symmetry. The connection there will always be there, obviously. Um, and just the old stories of the Packers coming to New York. You know, the first team to ever fly in a plane to a game was the Green Bay Packers coming to New York City to take on the Giants. Interesting. True story. Not surprised. Fun times. Well, Not they used to make all. the Giants so much money because people wanted to see that David Goliath. People thing. wanted to come, it, much like the Packers going to London. Like, and Cliff you Crystal think, talked about nuts. that. Yep, Cliff Crystal talked it's about that. Nuts. Oh, I I didn't even tell you this. I got my tickets finally. Oh, you did for the game. Yeah. Well yeah. done. Good job, buddy. So you'll yeah, be having I got, fun. I got a good deal on them. And I'll be in the press box, and I got to be quiet. Yeah, I got them. I got. Fun. I knew I'll I was going to get them from a friend, so I got them from a friend. And I actually, I'm not going to say it on air, but I could have gotten somebody's mm-hmm. box, and I decided not to because I don't know that person oh. very well. So uh, <laughs> yeah, so I just we're just going by ourselves. But um, the uh, want to give a shout out to Brandy. Apparently, Brandy is taking down the trolls in the chat. So got to give a shout out to Brandy. Thank you for she that. She always Appreciate does. Brandy, you, you don't. I you know. come up in just here. Give her a shout out. And you mess with you mess with T said TV. You mess with Brandy. <sighs> let me tell you. You do not want to mess with Brandy. There is zero question. That is what she does. She will take you out. Uh, finally, last piece of news, just because it's today. We usually do these on Wednesdays, but today we did. We just happen to need to do it on a Tuesday, and it just so happens that it falls on the birthday of one Kenny Clark. Happy birthday, Kenny Clark. Hmm. I cannot tell you how happy I am that you are a Green Bay Packer. Corey and I were just talking before the before we went live here about how even on plays where like Rashawn Gary is doing something amazing or there's some other great play somewhere else, if you just watch Kenny Clark on any given Packers clip, no matter whether he's the focal point or not, he's almost always doing something amazing. Yeah, so and usually he's, he's doing it against two people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like he, if you look, we were talking about the Rashawn Gary sack. If you look at the Rashawn Gary sack, one Rashawn Gary with the speed to get around Kenny's bull rush of yep. two guys because that was pretty fast. Right. But two, the fact that the left, the right tackle is just like, wait a second, I'm in a double team, and he didn't even. <laughs> it's not of his choosing. He's trying right. to chip. He's trying to chip Rashawn, or at least take Rashawn off of the chip, right. and then all of a sudden he just gets like sideways uh, bull rushed into by <laughs> Kenny, and like that's. I mean, like all Rashawn. Sean has to do is run like at that point, you know, right. it's like Kenny's yeah, done all unimpeded. the work. Just be faster than Kenny and you'll get a sack, which I'm, you know, that's Rashawn's superpower right now. I think I feel like, I feel like if you Dude, watch him, so if you really impressive. look back, he's keying off Kenny. Like Kenny, Kenny sets the, Kenny sets the D it's crazy. It's crazy. I Kenny has Kenny a good Clark. play I'm on so D. Happy. We have a good, we have a good play. It's it's I'll never forget. Easy. Remember when he was drafted, you and I were doing live. I think one of the very first, maybe the first year we ever did a live kind of watch party. I think we only did the first round that year, but we, it was, we were, we were in this building, but we were upstairs still. And you were in that back office when you had just expanded to, you had gone from like the back of the building. Now you had the front as well. And you had that kind of really, rail thin office that we watched 
up on we had the big screen TV up top. And I'll never forget because I wanted Miles Jack so bad in that draft. And Ted took Kenny instead. And I remember being really disappointed that we didn't get Miles oh, Jack. Know what you're about. Yeah. And Kenny, one billion percent, has made me completely forget about that. Like the whole that was the moment. What has Miles where Jack I, done? Jack. Oh, well, he's a pretty good linebacker. He was with Jacksonville and now he's with I can't remember who he's with now. But that's my point. Like Kenny is an absolute godsend and I love him and he absolutely his selection and the way he has played and become one of my favorite Packers has com- that's what completely changed me on the draft and like doing all the stuff before the draft and like falling in love with these players and having a draft crush and then you don't get him and then you're really disappointed but you don't you appreciate the guy who just became a Green Bay Packer and who now has gone on to become one of the best Green Bay Packers oh, so yeah. yeah I love Kenny Happy birthday, buddy. He is a man among boys. The thing about, Talk about the offense. is you kind of oh, feel like he, he kind of feel like there's going – I'm hoping. Okay, this is this is me manifesting, okay? So let's be honest. Okay? I got you. This, is, this isn't it, like I'm not – I have no here. data to back this up, okay? I just feel like what Kenny is missing, and I feel like we're going to get it this year, is going to be one of those Reggie White takeovers, Right. It's like that's the right. next level for Kenny. That's like the Michelin star three for Kenny where it's like, you know what? I'm sick of this fucking game, and I'm just going to take this goddamn <laughs> thing over. You know? And the funny yep. thing is, of all the positions in football, defensive linemen, where Kenny plays, that yep. is the most disruptive position in the NFL. I mean, if he, if that person wants you to not have an offensive play, they can decide. And Reggie showed us that back-to-back in the Super Bowl. And I just feel like – we're, we're, I want to manifest that badly. I'm with you in the sense that like, if that guy is on, especially along the interior, it wrecks everything. No matter what you're trying to do, yeah. whatever, whether you run or pass, like if that dude is on, you can't operate. And more yeah. often than not, Kenny is on. And that's why you see so many teams have to re, you know, commit resources to stopping the guy, like, like double teams or what have you. And usually he wrecks those too. So, yeah. Well, and it's the number one reason, I think, why until this game, you really didn't see the Packers rush more than four. Very rarely, right? I think, you know, a lot of it is how much can we hang our hat on Kenny so that we can give our secondary and our linebackers a little bit more help. And the truth is, I think Joe Barry is finding a lot. You can actually hang your a lot on on this kid. So, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty incredible. He's a pretty incredible player. I would honestly say he's probably the heart of our defense. If you if you're really truth be oh, told, maybe he's not the question. captain, but he's the right. guy from which everything comes from. Flows. Uh, especially yep. yeah, especially no when you're looking at Joe Barry going, hey, I can depend on Kenny getting a double team here, which is going to allow yep. me to not blitz Devondre Campbell or or Russell Douglas and have them in coverage. Hundred percent, no doubt. He is the beating heart of the Packers' defense. But right now, we're going to talk about the offense because we've got some stuff to talk about, including a very rare Rodgers pick six. It's interesting to me that this pick six, different in the sense of like where they were in the game, game flow, etc., but very similar to the one he th- was trying to throw to Devontae down in Tampa a couple of years ago. In the sense that. It's that long out route, right? They're trying to throw past the hash to the sideline. In Tampa, he's just trying to convert a third down. In this game against the Patriots, it's the end of the first half. He's had a poor first half. They're trying to move the ball, set up something for a score. Man, that's just a lazy decision and a lazy throw. And defensive, but don't take anything away from Jones, the rookie corner. He did a phenomenal job jumping that route. But, man, that's just a bad, bad – that's one of the worst plays Rodgers has made in a very long time. Very uncharacteristic. Although I am fascinated at the soundbite or the quote that Rodgers gave post game, or it might have been Monday from Matt, but somebody mentioned David Bakhtiari saying something to Rodgers at halftime. Like, about the sense of, like, did not play up to his standard at all in the first half. And there were some words, apparently David chimed in, and Aaron played a hell of a lot better in the second half. So I'm with, I, I'm down with like, you know, Aaron Rodgers is a four time MVP. He's pretty damn untouchable. And the, uh, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say this real quick. The amount of shit I saw on Twitter about wanting to bench Rodgers after that was insane. That's hilarious. In 
Yeah, Saying, I couldn't believe so, it. There was so a lot what, of it in the chat on the watch party. So what? Yeah. So what you're telling? But that was joking, though. So what you're telling me? Some is, of it. What I heard from all of that is David Bakhtiari is an Aaron Rodgers whisperer. Oh yes, I think so. I think he's one of the few humans that can you know say something to the man and have him listen. You know, I think Tom Clements is in that category. I think Matt Lafleur is in that category, and I think David Bakhtiari is in that category. Yeah, hundred percent. The big man. The what, big man knows I know what's this, up. I don't know why this isn't an offense. Okay, it is. It is. I'm transitioning right. Okay, what the okay, hell is going on at right tackle, and why is Elton <laughs> Jenkins not? Like, what's going on? <laughs> like, All right, here we go. Everybody on Twitter, you said, you're talking about Elton Jenkins being a guard and that he should be a guard and not a tackle. So is this true, what's going on? Because last season okay. I felt like he did pretty good at right tackle. Okay, but here's what's interesting. is I'm glad you oh, framed it that way. Too with, with David. Oh, no, well, okay, well, here's the thing, right? Um, I, I put out there on Twitter during the game, I wondered, I just wondered aloud, so to speak on Twitter, whether he came back too early, right? Cause he was struggling against Judon with the Patriots. Oh yeah. And didn't, now, didn't, what's his name respond to you? TJ Lang, 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 res- Lang. T- yeah. Lang responded and he said, you know, really admire his versatility, but the kid's a guard, put him back next to Dave, form your, give yourself like a dominant left side of the line and away you go. Yeah. And at the time I was like, I mean. I'm obviously going to listen to TJ Lang. I mean, the man's forgotten more about offensive line play than we will ever know. Yep. But it was fascinating to go back and actually watch the game, look at my all 22, and Elton actually balls out in the run game. And he actually isn't terrible in pass pro, except for those situations where Judon can like pin his ears back. Like the third and eight plus. Yeah. Where passing. you got some longer, obvious passing situations where. You know, the defender can pin his ears back and get after him. I was very much like, oh, yeah, it's time to move him back to guard watching the game live, you know. But going back and watching dispassionately or as dispassionately as I possibly can as a Packers fan, I'm like, okay, I I get he's only three games in. Don't forget he didn't play that first week. He's three games in coming off a really major ACL tear. And like I said, he's improved every week. Like, he's a hell of a – that game against the Patriots was a hell of a lot better than that Week 2 game against the Bears. Right, but the Bears don't well, have a defensive line like the Patriots, though. I mean, they're a much better well, defensive line than the Patriots. They have some Patriots edge rushers. Kind of shitty I mean, Judon, Judon's one of the top probably eight edge rushers. I mean, he's paid as such, like one of the top edge rushers in the league. There's no doubt about it. But it's not like the Bears aren't throwing stiffs out there. But – he, uh, some of that also was just no. I'm like saying I said, the Bears defensive back, linemen are better than the Patriots. Maybe not that. Maybe not Judon, but like the Patriots right. are kind of like one of the. Like, let's be honest, okay? No, I'm, I am go. a little bit. I am a little bit concerned, and the sun is like coming over my left shoulder. I know I it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. See Green Bay Packers. So I am a little concerned that you know we beat like one of the shittiest teams in the NFL. Like, let's be honest here. Like literally Corey, I'm, I'm, they're in I'm the, here to they're in the bottom five. They're in the bottom five of the NFL. Like take Bill Belichick out of the Patriots. And what do you have? You've got a fucking shit sandwich. Let's be honest. You know, <laughs> most likely, but they do have Bill Belichick. He is the Patriots and they beat him. Now here's the thing. I understand what you're saying. And I've heard a lot of that this week already. And definitely heard a lot of it Sunday night. And I don't care. It's a oh, W in October, no, yeah. early I'm October. I'm with you there. I'm with you Right there. now, collect the Ws. Yep. I don't care how it looks, collect the Ws. I care much more about how it looks in late November, early December. But right now, yes. What, was it a little, quote, harder than we thought it might be? No question about it. Now, I think Andy Herman pointed this out on Twitter. You know, Rodgers doesn't throw that pick six. Dobbs holds on to that ball at the end. And it's like 31-17, and we're all like, yep, that's what it should have been. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. A play or two away, man. It's any given Sunday. You're a yep. ball a ball bouncing one or two different ways, and everything changes. That's why Matt says, you look ahead, you'll get your ass whooped. So I, I understand that, and I get it, but I'm not concerned on October 2nd how they looked getting a win. Like, can I just say that Trevor likes you so much better than he likes me because he's taking the one box to you a lot, and he's just like, "Yeah, fuck what you, this two box." I think he's the last time he's guarding the last time against Trevor the produced this show. Eyes. He was worried about like I had I I was like I, I was like uh, I was getting all sweaty, and so my glasses, and so he was doing such a good job of like switching away. 
And so right. now, like, he produces this show with someone I'm not going to name, but they're in the NFL Network. So he's treating you like that person. Like, you're the talent, and I'm the guest. It's hilarious. Oh, I'm like, hey, you know I'm God. in this show too, buddy. Like, take I love, the two I love box. That now- what? You don't like my face right now? <laughs> I love that now you've called him out and you sign his checks. It is going to become the Corey Banky. Like, <laughs> the here two-box show. Here, I mean, he doesn't even take me one time. He took me. Oh, there. He takes the ass. The second time he's taking me one time. He was hey. trying to protect people from the glaring sun. <laughs> That's all. It's, it's going down, you? Nagler. God. Now man. it is. First 15 minutes of the show, we've had sun in our eyes. <sighs> oh, Thanks, sorry, Trevor. Is it that time? Here we go. Here we go. Thanks, Trevor. Oh, yeah. So you got the ASMR, but you got me holding there, the can. So there you go. I love it, though. Oh, so good. Ooh, Ooh, now that that sun is down, I can give everybody the good Lambo shot. Okay, I can go all there the way go. now. Um, let's just take this opportunity, since we've paused, uh, to remind everybody, you can grab yourself an ice cold carry the G at several establishments around the Green Bay, Appleton, and Milwaukee and Madison areas. You can, it. and it's, getting, it's getting replenished this week. We sold out of Madison. We sold out of half of Milwaukee. We sold out of most of Green Bay except Woodman's. Woodman's Green Woodman's Bay still has, has a some. million. It's amazing. Oh, and Woodman's Rush was Center. like, you're not going to buy us, us out. Rush Center right. sold a bunch. Rush Center has it on game they did. days. And we've got Speaking a little of, announcement actually to make. Yeah, go ahead. Let's do it. No, go ahead. Aaron Nagler. Himself, while I'm in Japan, we we I flew Nagler to Green Bay. He's going to be in Green Bay for the Jets game. You'll be able to see Aaron in person at the Rush Center. He's actually, you know, I promised the Rush Center a co-founder, so I had to come through. And uh, so you're going to get to see Aaron. And, dude, you're going to get like way some more swarm than I was, which is going to be awesome. Hardly. But three hours before kickoff, uh, when the Jets play in Lambeau, coming off that game against the Giants. So... Two Sundays from now, yes, I will be there. The Plaza Pit Stop, carry the G on hand. Oh, come Nagler, on out, you know buy what, some carry the G, you, and have a good time. You know what else is? You're gonna have to make sure to pay off your credit card because you're gonna have to buy some beers and get reimbursement for them. By the way, good luck with that. All right, we're moving on. <laughs> the young wide receivers are showing up. They're showing up, people. Yeah, they the are. Wa- young they're wide receivers are showing. Christian up. Watson. Dude, that Christian Watson Christian end Watson. around. Woo! Oh, my oh my that was sexy. Oh, my goodness. That was if you don't come out of that game excited about the future of the, these two young men, I have no time for you. If, if you're there like, oh, uh, Christian Watson didn't adjust to that deep ball, get out of my face. I don't, I don't want it. I don't want to hear it. Nothing but excitement for these young, two young rookie wide receivers playing in their fourth and what, third game. I just, I'm so, or be second game actually for Watson. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. The potential these two dudes in this offense. Oh my gosh. I, yes, the young guys showing up. Gotta love it. Anything else on the offensive side, Corey? Before we uh, it took us to a lot. Lo- it took us a half hour to get through offense. I'm sorry, people. I'm well, sorry. you were like you were Apologies. so upset last week that we went short. So I wanted to make sure we got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. <sighs> So nothing else on offense, huh? You're good? Yeah, I want the offense to be better, Nagler. I want it to well, be better. They've had one good half in Tampa. And they had one good half against the Patriots. Now they're going to have two good halves at the same time against the Giants. That's what's like, you happen. know what's really fun? Like, my most fun times as a Packer fan in life have right. been when the offense is a juggernaut. <laughs> and even if the defense sucks, it's fine. Yeah, but then you get you're 2011. Like, it's I don't fine. want that. I'm no, fine with not. it. I like, want defense. It's all I good. I just I want, want a complete see... team. No, no. I don't want a complete team. I want lopsided I know you offense. don't. I want, see, this is my want... point. What's your what point? do you want? It's all I about what you want. want. What do you want? No, Thank it's you. not. I want juggernaut <laughs> offense. I've already said it. So I know. That's fine. I'm not going to get it. Like uh, we're not uh, winning the Super this Bowl year, with the juggernaut you're not. offense. No, nope. no. Nope. If we're lucky, if we're lucky, QB one comes goes back to his fundamentals, and he looks like he did against that first half in Tampa, where after two right. drives, seven guys have gotten the ball, 
And the two five guys for five got, on third down. Yep, awesome. the two guys That's that got awesome. the ball the most times are named uh, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, and then everybody else gets a little piece, and that's the offense that we're going to live with, and I'm happy with that because I do actually think that could become an offensive juggernaut, but whether you know Matt and Aaron uh, decide to stay with that, I just don't think that's where they want to be, so I just don't think that's, you know, to them, that's, with, that's Michelin that. star one yeah. to them, right? They're like, oh, yeah, we did that. <laughs> Cool, right. but where we want to be is we want to be making, you know, sous vide fillets with <laughs> five step drops and seven step drops and make Elton Jenkin get his ass handed to him by a guy who's always going to get him when you got to pin your ears back because you know it's a freaking right. five or seven step drop. So that was an amazing analogy, by the way. That was incredible. That's well done. I like it. Okay, talking about defense. Rudy Ford answering the call. People, this is a guy they picked up off the street it's after crazy. the Jaguars cut him. And the Packers said, thank you very much. And he's been balling out on special teams. But much like Keyshawn Nixon last week, when Jair went down in the first drive, a Adrian Amos goes down on the first drive against the Patriots. And Rudy Ford comes in. And I'm not saying he balled out even. I'm like, I'm not even saying he was great or perfect or any of that. But he came in and they did. They ran the defense and he acquitted himself quite well. I thought he played very well. Like, that's depth, baby. All offseason, all offseason, all we heard was they don't have any depth. There's no depth. There's a lot of front line, but there's no depth. This is what Brian's always talking about when he says it's a 365 day a week year job. You're always looking to add talent, you're always finding talent. Much like picking up Rasul last year, I'm not saying Rudy's going to go to those levels, but that's a in a very important pickup that no one was talking about because no one saw it coming. But the, you can bet the Packers personnel people were like, well, you know what? They got a new regime in there. They got a new system. They're probably going to let this kid go. We'll snatch him when he gets on the street. And that's exactly what happened. There you go. Balling out. Love it. Love to see it. Now, here's my other goal. So I'm praising the Packers here, but here's where I turn heel. Yeah. Um, do the Packers even care about run defense? I mean, do they care? Do they really care? No. No. I mean, at least uh, kinda, just, uh, the coaching it's, staff, it's like do they the, care? No. There's no way I they care. I don't think they care. I, I think maybe right? it comes from, like, they don't really care about running the ball, so why, why stop running the ball? Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no. I just, looking at like, that oh, second running, half, yeah. I'm like, I get you've got to I guess a third string QB. So you're like, we're just not going to let the third string QB beat us. Like they let the Patriots do exactly what they wanted to do, which was run the football, like I mean, into yeah. light boxes with two high safeties and off coverage. You could the not, if, if you wanted to, thing, it's just like, why? If you wanted to play understand. a preseason game, that was like the blueprint. Yeah, I, I was, that was I, – did anybody challenge Joe? Did we, did we get uh, – we didn't get Joe this week. You get him on Coordinators Thursday, right? will be later this later in the week, yeah. Uh, yeah, in usually fact, Thursdays. Wait, that's a good question. Usually, like, so, yeah, it's usually like Thursday or Wednesday late. I mean, but, that yeah, was we didn't pretty have him obvious in-game. Like, bro, you got the third-string quarterback, okay? I Who you know you, I didn't guarantee practice you, all week. Yeah, and I guarantee you, know? you they didn't do a lot of tape on the guy. They didn't really, like, no. practice for the guy or anything. But, like, nope. most people, they're like, oh, you put the rookie in or you put the third stringer in? Okay, we're going to challenge him. And you would think, like, put one guy in the box at least, like, not too at high least. safety. It's so weird. What's so weird is they kind of so did bizarre. it when the kid first got out there. Like, the very first drive or two. Romo even mentions it on the broadcast. Oh, they got a lot of guys in the box. Like, they're playing up on the line of scrimmage. Which makes sense. You've got a rookie, what, yeah, fourth rounder? But also, like, who cares? Make, make him make, make the so throws he, in the plays. So he beats you on one touchdown, and then you go to two high safety. Who cares? Like, who cares? Like, it's just... It's, I don't get it. Anyway, they, uh, we'll hear from Joe Barry tomorrow, by the way. Tomorrow afternoon Okay, is when he's slated. Slated to, to London, So I'll be flying, so let so me know how it goes. You won't care. I will. I will let you know. Um... So Finally, are you ask him a question. Oh, you can't ask. I no can't. Anymore. I can't. I'm not in town, and they only don't do Zoom anymore. But wait, um, you're going to be able to be oh at. Boy. You're going to be able to ask questions after the game, right? In London, yes, correct. Yeah. <laughs> right. Although I will we say, holy a... cow! 
So today we got the list of when they'll be available while they're in London. And yeah. holy shit, uh, I won't be doing anything before the game because the Packers availability, Aaron Rodgers is available at the hotel they're staying at, which is like a million miles away from London. Like it's so far away. Because I was yeah, like, oh, maybe they, I'll go out and get some availability. Don't they put like, press? No. Don't they put the press on a thing to go to the game then? Like they do in no, in they the tell Bowl? they tell the press where the thing is, and they the NFL because it's a new co- officially a neutral site game. There are like press hotel rooms available, which obviously I didn't get. So oh yeah yeah because we were no. we were going separately. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. But it's like a million miles away. I looked at the map today. I'm like, are you kidding me? I have to get on like a six hour train ride to get there. Well, I might be exaggerating, but it's a very long way away. So I won't be talking before the game, but like I'll definitely even if be you take an Uber. Be a very, very long. It's ride. just weird. No, but can't you? If you go to the hotel in the morning, I think you can. There's a bus that takes all the press to the actual like like uh, game. I know they location. do that for for big games, and they've done it. They for do Super that for Bowl, the Super Bowl. Yeah, you should find out. But I don't think for this. But I will say one of the best, most surrealist experience I've ever had in my entire life was when the Super Bowl was here in New York and they legit shut down our path in Midtown Manhattan to go from Midtown to yep. MetLife Jersey. out in yep. Jersey. That was wild. Well, like it was in the middle of the day. Here's what's crazy. So in New I York. Saw Bado- so dude, an even crazier thing there, but I but totally the same experience. But I was right. I guess who was on the, it was the first time I met Tom Silverstein, <laughs> Lori Nichols. Oh, at the Super Bowl? Right. Yep, and we're all on the bus together, and Bedard's on the bus, which I saw Bedard this weekend, Greg Bedard. Right. Uh, and Bedard is on the bus, and we're passing through where JFK was shot. The the, oh, the we're, oh my god, we're oh, in yeah, yeah. we're in Dealey a police Plaza. motorcade going through <laughs> Dealey Plaza. Like, you want to talk surreal? Like, uh, it's like no I'm thanks. in the press I'll bus. Walk, I'm in the, yeah, I'm in the press bus on my way to Arlington with all these people that are like all my heroes, you know, Bob McGinn right. at the time and right. Tom right. Silverstein and Pete Doherty. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness, this is crazy. Real. <laughs> these people. Uh, final. Me. What happened? Fine. No, they don't. Final note about the defense. I won. No, not at all. Rashawn Gary proving the Packers right. Remember when we had our live stream, Corey, on draft night? The Packers picked Rashawn Gary. This is what I'm talking about with the whole Kenny Clark experience. Like, I, this is what it has informed me as a Packers fan. And I watched so many people that night just dog the Packers and say, oh, what a terrible pick it was. And, oh, what a bust he was going to be. And, oh, he didn't do anything in college. And blah, blah, blah. Now look at Rashawn Gary. He is an absolute stud. Just proving the Packers right, man. Packers kind of know what they're doing. I know they're not perfect. They're not infallible. But they kind of know what they're doing. So that's all I got to say. Are you sure? That's all? Yep. You want to preview okay. this game, Corey? Wow, you put a game? preview We're in the be script? Watching? I can't believe it. What happened? Literally last week was the only time I haven't. But go off. All right, okay. so here comes like Saquon forever. Barkley. Here he comes. NFL rushing leader. Probably going to get the ball like 400 times on Sunday. Can the Packers stop him? No. I don't know. We can outscore them, though. I, but we can't stop That's the hope. Berkeley. That's the dream. Depends which version of the offense shows up, I guess. But It's just the reality. Whew. Barkley's going to be a problem. I feel though. like we're going to – I really feel like we're going to do well in London. I, I got this feeling. I do too. I, that is the feel I have, but you never know. I will say it kind of reminds me. Of, remember leading up to that game? I think it was AJ's rookie year. Third, oh, was it a Thursday? On oh, a Sunday night against the Titans, and it was snowing. And that whole yeah. week leading up to it, it was like, oh, Derrick Henry is going to run all over <laughs> oh, the Packers. Yeah. Like, it was like you could not go 30 seconds without some talking head or some blog post or some Twitter being oh derrick henry is going to come and absolutely decimate the green bay packers he is going to claim lordship over their lands they're going to rename it derrick henry field like he will you'll have to rename your firstborn child after derrick henry like that it was like ridiculous levels of and they absolutely shut derrick henry down aj dylan's coming out party that night 
I'm hoping that's the case on Sunday because I can't handle living in New York City with my Giants friends who just are just begging for Barkley to run all over. I've already gotten two texts from Giants people this fans, week okay, talking about okay. how they're just going to go. This is crazy. not going to. This is not going to give me any friends in New York, but. I yeah, right. feel like Jets fans are way more diehard. Giants fans are way more bandwagon. Let's just be honest, okay? Let's just be honest about it, okay? That is true. Okay. That is true. There's zero. You have not said anything out of turn, out of touch, nothing. That's it. Every Giants fan I've ever met is like a legacy, and they don't really care. <laughs> okay, I don't know about everyone, but... You talk about diehard. The I've Giants met. have gone to Super Bowls. Giants have everyone, won championships everyone I've in met. this lifetime. Like the Jets, if you're still a Jets fan today in 2022 and have been for any length of time, yes, you are diehard. And you are way more diehard than most any Giants fan I know. I'm not going to say every Giants fan, but the Giants most did of them. have Phil yep. Sims, though. So and he's, he, ugh. Ugh. he won a Super Bowl. He won a Super Bowl with Phil Sims. Ugh, Phil Sims, man. He Phil Sims fine as a player, but like get him off broadcast. He's not a broadcaster. He's yeah, done. no, he's he's he should stick be. a fork in him. He's done. You're right about he's that. He's been done for like twenty um, years. Also, how crazy. how long are we gonna see Terry Bradshaw and like Oh like, it's are we dude, ever that's been get... over for years. What are Bro, we doing with Terry Bradshaw? What are what, what like what are we are we doing? just gonna like are we just gonna make like mannequins of Terry like Brad Bradshaw and Howie that he's literally seen for the first time Jimmy. ever while he's watching? They're gonna no. be robots, nope. bro. Our nope. your kids are gonna have kids, and they're gonna watch Fox NFL Sunday, and they're gonna be AI robots of Terry Bradshaw, Jimmy Johnson, and Howie. Nope. Nope, can't do it. Like, what are can't we doing, do Fox? Get some new people. Why Why What's can't we just crazy? get any new blood anywhere in broadcasting? Like, t- television is going okay, like wait, this, wait, wait, wait. and you can't get any yeah. new blood anywhere. It's crazy. No. I, well, hey, what do you mean? You have Chris Collinsworth's son over there at NBC. Good the fuck Lord. out of here with that. Where, he, he did that podcast for PFF. I think it was for PFF, oh maybe God. NBC. But he did a podcast with Richard Sherman where he kept calling... Romeo Dobbs, Romeo Weens. Like, my dude, my brother in Christ. Dude, I saw that. <laughs> At least learn the name. I names. saw that. Romeo like, Weens. What a fucking idiot. Romeo I mean, I'm a look, I'm a fucking idiot, but look, God, at least I at least I'm self aware enough to know <laughs> that I'm an idiot. But it's like oh it's really God. fascinating to me. I know we're off the rails, but it's like broadcast television. Totally off the rails, but it's fine. Can we please like you know when when people talk about diversity in broadcast and radio and how the people making decisions are the people that that matter? Mm-hmm. We have got to stop with New York, Connecticut and North New England producers producing all of these shows for all of this television cuz all we're getting is the same fucking tired garbage on television in the NFL and i know we're going to watch no matter what so i'm not one of these people who's like i'm right. not going to watch anymore but nobody watches the pregame <laughs> there's a reason why you know tom grossi has 350,000 subs on youtube and like people come to us and they're like oh i don't even i mean so many people came to me and like we're a fucking bunch of idiots so it's like the fact that people actually are coming <laughs> to us versus like television and experts and stuff it just says a lot about like the 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 lack of you know just well the paradigm's the same right what blows my mind what blows my mind right i remember when we very first started this and i just started making inroads with nfl films and getting to know people at 345 park and like i was just starting out right and i would go to the nfl broadcast boot camp or they call it something else now but out in nfl films out in jersey and it was like here's your preparation for how to be a broadcaster, right? And essentially, it was how to do everything that you've watched on television growing up and to repeat it for all these guys who've played in the league, which is now basically what you have. When you tune in on Sundays or whenever, you have the play-by-play guy and you have the color commentator, and they're all working off the same framework. And it's like, can we just do... Some, I mean, anything else. Well, and, now, and Manning Cast, like fair, Manning Cast. I was Manning just going to say. Yep. 
There's and a Omaha little bit happening like now. Everything, like everything outside Peyton of that Manning is doing and other blogs multicast doing, yeah. in general. ESPN was ahead on this. I will give them props yep. for the football, the college football. Yeah, championship. but but ESPN, but that Fox, stuff that NBC, done and CBS ago. are way behind NFL Network. So NFL Network, my only big problem with NFL Network is the is the white dude podcast with Greg that I've bitched about, where it's like every white old guy you've ever met talking about football and not one black person, which I just think is r- ridiculous, right? But otherwise, NFL Network does a good job with diverse hiring and a mix of people and a lot of black former players and like they do a re- right. really much better job. But like CBS, NBC, Fox and ESPN, I mean, it's just like can we just get rid of all the producers that work there because they're they're just whoever's casting is just not any good. I'm sorry. Like nobody's <laughs> watching because of the people that are casted and that's sad because you're losing viewership. And, like, it's funny, like, Amazon's answer to Thursday night is the same old shit. I mean, Al yeah, Michaels, really? The guy's 95 years old. He's one of the best in the uh, business, but he's 97 or something. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, also, Bill Belichick being 78 should not be able to coach in the NFL. There should be a cutoff. There should be an age cutoff like there is at the Packers. You should not be able to coach in the NFL after 70. That's dumb. I'm sorry. Where, That's dumb. Where? Where? We took so many turns in the last five minutes. I don't even know how to even keep up. That was amazing. We went. From I don't even turn that shit on anymore. And, and, and then we and then we went to Bill Belichick and wow, incredible. Let's just let's just let's just get to the next segment because it's time. <laughs> it is definitely time. <laughs> I don't think tri- That's right. It's this week in the Packer blogosphere, the return of that venerable series. Corey, I want to give someone a shout out. You know, every once in a while, we turn our eyes, we turn our gaze here at Tisa TV to people outside of our sphere, right? Our personal, you know, we know these people. We like these people. We invite them over to your place for drinks during training camp, etc. But right now, I want to give someone a shout out who I think doesn't get trumpeted a whole lot on the Packers beat. Hasn't really got much of a fanfare upon her arrival but holy mother mary of god i want to give a shout out to cassidy hill with the green bay press gazette and milwaukee journal sentinel working for gannett she's essentially doing the gig that i was doing years ago when i was on the beat but doing it at such a high level a much better job than i ever did um she is so good at what she does Uh, she's so good uh follow her on twitter if you're not i highly recommend it she does a really good job of finding like different angles, different ways of bringing you what's going on with the team. Uh, she's not, you know, obviously not uh, the most garish personality on Twitter, or what have you, but she is very, 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 very good at her job. She had an excellent uh, video that she had from the locker room, with Robert Tunyon today. She had it up on a, a, a YouTube short on the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel YouTube page. So well done. Just a great idea as far as like how it felt to catch a touchdown for the first time since his ACL injury, since so long since he did it, etc. It's just a little easy thing in the locker room. Makes a little video and does some captioning, and it was so good. And she does that kind of stuff all the time, whether it's getting guys to play games in the locker room, etc. Like, so well done. And also, can I just say, help her out. Follow her. Start consuming her content. Because look at this. Poor Cassidy. I mean... Here she is, pregame, are, pregame. It doesn't say how many people are following her, so they don't know. I know. I, I well, well, I'm telling them to follow her oh, because look at this. Look at what she has to work with. It's look pregame. Look at Tom she's, just bringing, looking, she's, she's bringing the energy. She's like happy to be there at her job, trying to connect with Packers fans. <laughs> and Ryan Wood and Tom Silverstein oh are looking God. at you like. I would like to be anywhere else but right Tom here. Silverstein, no. he always does that. It's so great. He used to do that all the time. He'll just look at you like he's going to. He just hates being there, and he doesn't realize that you're streaming, and you're like, bro, do you even watch these back to see but how much of a – But that's the thing. She's talking in that clip. Like sometimes there's moments where he's like, just like, like the, they don't know or it's just starting or whatever. What if I did this but show and I just she's literally introducing them at that point. Like, 
Poor Cassidy. I mean, she's got to work with these dour dudes who just don't want to be on camera. Like, I just shout out to Cassidy. She's so good at what she does. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, nothing but love. Don't turn this into something, people. Nothing but love to Ryan and Tom. They do great work. But oh, you I'm know doing they Tom, hate not Ryan. Camera. I'm doing Tom. I know I'm you're doing, doing Tom. Tom. I know you're doing Spoon. Tom. Spoon's like, he, it's hard to do. He, he's he got <laughs> the know. best retching, resting bitch face you've ever seen in your life. I mean, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I mean, so it's much. like anybody else is working so hard to make that face. Like, the face that he, like, go right. back to that clip. No, seriously, just, go back to the, go back to the one of, of, of Tom. Like, look at how. Like, he's look at his mouth. He's just like, I fucking hate that so much. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just shout out Cassidy. I mean, she is pulling her weight. She's doing her job. She's trying to bring the connection, trying to bring the energy. And these dudes are like, can I get back to the press box, please? I don't want to be. Can I please write my work. story that no one's going to read? All right. Relax. Boop, boop, boop. But <laughs> shout out Cassidy. Shout out Cassidy. She's so good. Um, also, shout out to anybody going to be in London this Friday afternoon. Corey, I've been waiting so long to say it. this Friday. Not a couple Fridays from now. Not a couple not next Friday. It's this Friday, October 7th, 4 p.m. at the Dog and Duck. Join Corey and I for a pint. And I, there's a rumor the intern might be there. I, I heard, like, now we've been burned before. You know, we've been told, oh, yeah, guys, I'm going to be there. Yeah. And then he doesn't show up. So it's so I'm true. Just, I'm it's not so going to like, you know, yeah. over promise and under deliver because we try not to do that at Cheesehead TV. But I heard the intern will be there as well. So join us for a pint, people. Friday, October 7th, this Friday at the Dog and Duck in Soho. It's my favorite pub in the whole wide world. Do it, people. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hope to see you there. Corey, why don't we get some super chats? Because I've seen a few coming across. Yeah, the before we do, bit. I just want to give a hold Your on. Dudes. I just want to give a. Shout out to Conup's Meat, Conup Meats in Stangleville. Stangleville, the... baby. Okay, here's the thing that's crazy about this place, okay? The best uh-huh. campfire wieners in Wisconsin, period, end of story, which means the world, by the way. Uh, yes, the best hot sticks, so the hot sticks are crazy. And the best bratwurst in Wisconsin. Come at me, fight me, I don't care. Uh, I have other people. I have I have 90-year-olds who will fight you about this. I have 80-year-olds who will fight you about this. I have uh, Michelin star chefs from Milwaukee and Chicago that will fight you on this. Like, everyone agrees once they have a Stangleville broad. So they do not sponsor us. I just want to give them a shout. I keep meaning to wear their hat because they're awesome. Uh, they don't think they have a one-star review on Yelp anymore. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. No, it wasn't a Google review or some nonsense. Yeah, right, it was anyway. a Google review. I don't know. I think Tyler. I think that was a plant, by the way. I think Tyler did that yeah, on purpose. I, Tyler did that on purpose. That's no doubt about it. Let's get to All the right, YouTube. We got the first super one. Pats. Luke Carnes. Thanks, Super Chat. Have so much fun in London. Have a beer for me there. Cheers. Carry the G. So thank you, Salud, Luke. Brother. Um, since I can't buy Carry the G in San Diego, I ask that you buy a four pack and have them for me. Enjoy. Thank you, Luke. Appreciate you. You know, four packs Thanks, at Luke. Woodman's are only. Are, well, they're 1041, but uh, we got it with the two Super right. Chats. But you know the other thing is, uh, I, okay, don't nobody tell anybody this, but, <clears throat> you know, if uh, I did, I well, I didn't, but I do know of someone who shipped some Carry the G to London. So we'll see. We'll see if... Uh, We'll see if it made it. It wasn't me. See if it I makes it through out, customs. I did not fill out the customs form. My name is not on it anywhere. But, um, yeah, Seth Seymour, thanks for the super chat. Outside of Preston and Gary, how are the OLBs, outside linebackers, doing? You know what's funny is I think Garvin has been perfectly utilized in the sense of needing some bulk early against the run, keep guys fresh. Um, Enig Barre, he's played well. The rookie has shown up uh, again and again on on the limited number of snaps that he gets, the film that you can get to watch. I think it's only a matter of time, so they start giving him a few more opportunities because I think there are opportunities there for him, especially, again, if you want to keep those guys fresh, your frontline guys in Preston and and uh, and Rashawn. The one worry, I think, with the rookie is, is holding up against the run. He's probably going to get targeted in that regard if he plays early downs. Or a, a lot of early downs, but for the most part, he is kind of not want to say picked up where he left off this summer, but 
He's played well in limited opportunities, and I would think you'd see more of him as this year goes on. And we got s- too old for this. Thanks for Super Chat. I've never been to Lambeau, and I'm buying myself tickets as a 30th birthday present to myself. Which game should I go to? Jets, for sure, because you're going to see Nagler. You'll be able to get a carry the G at the Resch Center. 100% Jets, plus we're going to win. You're guaranteed to win. I didn't tell you that, but, you know, it, that's the game. I would, suggest, Logan, I would suggest the Rams game. But that's just me. It's a Monday nighter. It's going to be a national game, nighttime. You got all day to party. It's going to be a lot of fun. Jets game. Do the Jets game. Uh, Dustin Logan, <laughs> thanks for Super Chat. Bears haven't played in London, and no one in London is disappointed. This is about to legit be home game. Agree with you, Dustin. I hope so. Uh, I hope, uh, that's I not true. So. Bears have played in London. But, yes, the Packers are going to dominate, no doubt. Technically, this is a home game for the Packers, even though the NFL wants to call it a neutral site, by the way. Just oh, it's going to be a home game. Whether the, Pack, uh, the, whether the NFL wants to uh, call it one or not. It is definitely going to be a Packers Ryan Willie, thanks for Super Chat. Can the Packers stop running the HB draw from this SG? From the shotgun, the halfback draw? I don't hate the halfback draw, actually, if they if they ran a traditional draw, right? But they keep doing, like, they're trying to run a zone thing out of shotgun. And, yeah, it can be frustrating. But I can also show you plenty of cut-ups where they're really successful with that play. I mean, don't forget, yeah. the other team gets paid, too, and they do sometimes shut it down, but... It's who they are. It's part of their identity. It ain't going away anytime soon. Anita Jubre, thank you. Brought home a four-pack to Connecticut. Thank you, Anita. There you go. What's um, up, Anita? Anita uh, posting online during the weekend. Appreciate that. Ken Hansen, will Aaron have a carry the G with each Patreon member, one per member? No, that's not how it works. I actually had a I had one carry the G with four Patreon members, so it was I love it. Run Corey trying to guard against me getting totally fucking wasted before watch party starts. I'm not at my house, so I need we need to pace yourself. <laughs> Ayahuasca, thanks for the super chat. Just need to vent a little on JB game plans on D. Way too much talent to let a no name rookie with a run game make it look too easy. I'm uh, with you. I'm with you. Been talking about it all week. It's annoying as it, and I'm very interested to hear what my brothers and sisters on the beat have to ask Joe Barry tomorrow when he's available. Because, m- Joe, m- my brother, what the hell? I don't know, man. I'm with you. I'm it's equally frustrated. Uh, we got he Soder. Soder, did the Canadian judge mark the Packers down on winning style points again? That guy always with the Edmonton Elks. <laughs> 1978 to 82 Grey Cup run being more impressive than the 1960s Packers. Okay, yeah, relax on jump. that last part. But, yeah, uh, clearly the style points don't add up, unfortunately. Dude, n- nothing in the NFL compares to the 1960s Packers, so why the hell would any bullshit-ass Canadian He's crap? making a joke. I get it. I get it. Oh. oh, he always likes to trigger me, Try Game winner. Oh, <laughs> Tron God 714. Thanks for Super Chat. Game winners, one down, two to go. Love me some Mason Mason Crosby. Mason, Mason Crosby, Mason, Mason Crosby, Mason, Mason Crosby. Shout Tom out Tom Grossi with the 25K subs hypey. Thank you All for right. noticing, Relax, Tom. 350K. Okay, here's the yeah, thing. Yeah, Here, yeah. Here's why I put this. Here's why I put this. Because basically, Tom, if you ever want to keep getting an NFL game feed, and you know, you're, you know, here's the thing. Last weekend, you were fine. And you know how New York is. There's always like two or three games where all of a sudden they're like, oh, no, you can't have that feed. We're going to go to Giants or whatever. You need that Green Bay feed. So I need to see the subs increase in order for you to get the game feed. Okay, buddy? Debbie Downer, thanks for the super chat. Jay Reed needs to play more. Does he or does he need to play better to play more? Hmm. Deep thoughts with Aaron that Nagler. Works. Overshadow Sean, thanks for the super chat. Overshadow Sean on draft night. Draft anyone but Gary. He's the only player I don't want. Overshadow now. <laughs> shut up, sh- shut up, Sean. So glad to be wrong. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> I feel you, brother. I feel you. It happens to the best of us. Q King, thanks for the super chat. Some of the super chat. Hello, I can't speak. Can we show love to Banky's favorite special team? That's right. Special teams, baby. Special teams are balling out. Hell, special teams. Last play of the game to win it. 
Let's go, special teams. Well done. Well done. Here's the Good thing. job, QK. If you're talking about special teams, eh, something's wrong. Con <laughs> Krug, thanks for the super chat. Part of me wants to win Terry Bradshaw's money and just give it back to him. Dude, you just need to go. This briefcase, this briefcase full of cash should help. <laughs> What's so annoying about it is like he's there's so, so many tired. times where he's like literally reading highlights where he has no – like he's never heard of those players. He has no nope. idea – what and the play so is like he's because he has no talent, it. so uh, I think he had talent like he was talented as a broadcaster back in the day but he's gone he's done it's over it's over it's he, over he he is the clear here's the thing one like if you look at like the best talent in the world they understand they're aware enough like real talented people are self-aware enough mm-hmm. to realize when they've become like like a caricature of themselves right like Dude, Al Pacino doesn't go around being a caricature of himself unless he knows it. He's self-aware about that. So is Robert De Niro. I saw this thing where Jamie Foxx knew that Al Pacino was a really good actor because the first time he ever met him, he was nothing like he was in real life. You know? And right. so it's like if you look at Terry Bradshaw, it's like, dude, he totally has bought into this whole caricature of himself that now he's just like a he's like a he's like a yeah, it's just he's a cartoon of himself at this point. It's sad. Corey, I'm trying to wrestle with the That's fact sad. that you just compared Terry Bradshaw to Al Pacino and, and, and Robert De Niro. No, at the highest level. But at the highest level, but think about that. it. Like, but but don't we no, want I feel our you. I understand what you're like, saying. Like John Madden, I compared John Madden to Al Pacino. I think John Madden was as good at what he did as Al Pacino's is at what he does. Well, there, They're I very different totally things, agree. right? Thousand percent. But like, or Pat yep. Summerall, right? But it's like Yep. You know, even when even when uh, John Madden, like, he never thought his shit didn't stink. That's what always made John great, right? Because he was yep. humble enough to understand at all times. He knew that who he was. Yeah. He knew who he no was. Doubt. Terry Bradshaw thinks he's a cartoon. John Madden never treated himself <laughs> like a cartoon. Yeah, he did stupid shit. Oh, we're, right. that turkey legs got six on there and all this. But he knew the joke, and you were right. in on it with him. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, yep. it's just different. I agree with that. Alex Pryor, thanks for chat. How come you guys don't have guests on anymore? Because they're boring for the most part. We do when it's special, and we will. Yeah, special. We'll have guests on this year. We had Matt on last year. We had Cliff Crystal on last year. Like we'll have guests on, but more often than not, it's just boring. Like you come into a YouTube show, and it's like here's Player X, and Player X gives you the real unvarnished or no, the varnished answers and. You talk about the game, and you talk about their life, and like the thing, and then you move on. And it doesn't add anything. Corey and I had a yeah. very, I don't want to say deep, but a very specific conversation about this a couple years ago, where it was like, no, man, like w- we love talking about Packers football. We always have. That's why literally this show began. We love having players on, we love having coach on, like we love those things. But if they're special, like everybody, especially in this day and age where legit now, especially coming out of the pandemic, Everybody with a YouTube chat is like, oh, I can just Zoom with this player and send them a link. Yeah. But then half the time, the player is like sitting in an airport going, oh, yeah, really happy to join you guys. Oh, wait, okay, what? Oh, yeah, okay. Like, that's not compelling. So we love having guests on. We will in the future. We have in the past. But if it works, if it's special, and if it's cool and additive, not just because we want to do it, you know, just to do it. Trust me, if Coach wanted to come on every show, we'd have him on. He Soder, 100%. thanks for the super chat. Two guys doing a watch party helped save my marriage, showed the wife that other people are thinking and reacting in a way that is similar to me. Great work, guys. Thanks for nothing, Joe and Troy. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Wendy Vance, Soder, thanks the for the super chat. And uh, also, I'm going to get – Wendy had a question, so I pulled that too. Does anyone else notice how Aaron Rodgers called the timeout on third down and then comes in and gets sacked right away? It happens almost every game. <laughs> Let's get out. Oh God! Now, now I really want to make that trip to the hotel on Friday, where Aaron's availability is going to be, so I can ask Aaron, that exact question. Aaron, did you know that the Wendy? Last no, no, no. You got to, you got to preface it with Wendy Vance wants to know. Wendy Vance paid us four ninety nine to come all the way this way and ask you, but no, then you can be like. Did you know that the last four out of five times you called a timeout on third down, you get sacked right away? Do you do you, you self right away? Are you self What's are going you on self there, critical you self about scouting this? this? What's going on, do buddy? You think this is a thing? Look, I don't know. Look, all I know is that yes, the uh, the timeouts are almost always annoying as hell. 
like little ton has not been torn apart yet this year, but I'm sure he's going to be. Um, look, they just want to get it right. And if they get into a certain call where they don't have options and that does happen, then Rogers is going to call a timeout. And then, yeah, probably get sacked. It's annoying. It's not changing. Jacques C. Thanks for the super chat. If there's anything Joe Barry can learn from is the chiefs when they pressured love last year, go pack, go. I mean, right, right. Look at Spagnola in that game. It's like, oh, guy making his first start. I'm going to send the house. Because guess what? He's probably not going to know how to handle it. And you know what else? The whole front didn't know how to handle it because they don't have Aaron Rodgers there going, okay, we're going to change the protection. We're going to do all this. Yes! God forbid you dictate. You know who we should have on, to be honest with you, is we should have David on because he'd probably probably give us – No, David David Bakhtiari because he'd probably give us – He would – he would hit, he would give us the unvarnished stuff. That's that's my thing. Like I love talking to Kenny and yeah, David, but, and uh, yeah, I love talking Dave's, to Trevon because Dave's they give on, us a little bit. No, no, no. He's in that, but he'll still give you a couple McAfee nuggets. Now you know? you know he doesn't want us. He's not. That's gonna be true. Up. He's too big that's for true. us. He's too big time for us now. That's true. Amy Dave, Gooding. Dave's gotten too big. Thanks to the super chat. Have a beer or three for me in London. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Appreciate. Thank you, that. Amy. Really appreciate it. Jonathan Hale, hate asking because I root for the guy, but has the Amari experiment at Returner run its course? Thanks for the super chat. Ooh, baby. Um, I don't know if it's run its course, I but I gotta think I they're think looking. So. I don't think. I gotta think they're looking. You're always he, looking to upgrade, he, right? I think they're looking, no doubt. He he had. If you look back, he had a he had a couple big yardage plays. They weren't. No, he had some. Plays. He's had some nice returns. He's had some really tough looking returns. But I gotta think. Man, you're not playing from scrimmage, and you're offering precious little as a returner. <sighs> Doesn't bode well. Does not bode well for young Amari, no doubt. Too old for this. Thanks for Super Chat. Jets game it is. Sorry, Negs. I guess you'll have to meet me. Wah. I'm in, buddy. Can't wait. Let's go. Go, Pat, go. New, Carry new the schmoo. Thanks for the Europe, Euro Super Chat. Really, really appreciate that. Really looking forward to the Packers playing in London. Hoping I can get to the pub on Friday after work. Carry the G. Go, Pack, go. Thank you so much. Let's Hope go, baby. See you. Um, we, again, are going to be in London. That's all I got. Love, people loved when Charlie Barons was on. Charlie Barons is way too big for us now, though. Way like, too She said big. TV. What's that? But he's great. What's we that? love Charlie. He's, yeah, we love used to. Charlie. I remember the first time you ever discovered Manitowoc Minute before he became Charlie Barons. But like you sent the link to me of one of the very first ones he ever did. And you were like, I am dying. This is great. And he it needs was to bring that back. Is. I thought he was going to do that every Packer season. Like he's so big know. for that. He's like way too big. For I know, that. but now he's too busy. He's making like TikToks and reels and you know, he's an influencer now. Imagine like, if I was ever Manitowoc too big Minute. for this show though. That's just funny. <laughs> I mean, you are too big for the show, but you still grace us with her with, with your presence. So that's no, but I'm not really, though. That's the thing I'll never be because it's like no, but that's the thing. It's like, dude, Manitowoc Minute made him, and now like he doesn't do it anymore. Like the last Manitowoc yeah. Minute was like three months ago. I need more. I need more Manitowoc Minutes, Charlie. Maybe I'll do some videos to beg him to do some more. That's a really good idea. Should absolutely do it. Oh, anyway, as we move on, oh, coming out of uh, all those amazing super chats. Let's give a shout out to our Patreon members. Patreon members, you guys are the lifeblood of what we do here at Cheesehead TV. We cannot thank you enough. Thank you for all of your support. Um, be sure to check the Patreon page. The information for the meetup in December is on the Patreon page for our members. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Charlene has outdone herself. I didn't think it was possible, but this meetup is going to be even better than last year's. Hope you can join us. It's the Sunday before the Rams game on that Monday night. It's going to be baller. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you, Patreon members, for your support, especially since we, you know, we started the Patreon page during the pandemic as a way to like kind of say, like, we're all in this together. We're, we really want to help kind of grow this community, and you guys have responded in the biggest way. We really appreciate it. Um, and speaking of appreciation... Big time shout out to everybody here on YouTube and the Carry the G Club memberships. Ooh, look at that new logo for the Carry the G Club that Brent made. How about that? Brent does not mess around. Brent was like, oh, you guys need a logo better than the Canva one that Nagler made in his sleep. Hey, that's nice. Hey, Nagler's trying to help out any way he can. I like that. As he uh, marches on. I like this. This is so good. This is so good. 
Killing it, killing the game as as usual, Brent. But thank you, most importantly, to the Carry the G membership here on yes. YouTube. You guys are baller. You guys are hilarious on game day, watch parties, really getting involved with the emojis. It's a lot of fun to watch. Thank you so much for the support. Corey, you got anything else, buddy? No, I just want to win in London. Can, I, can we please just That's win? That's right, you do. Come on, let's go. That'll do it for this episode of Packer Transplants Live. We'd like to thank everyone who makes Cheesehead TV part of their daily Packers routine. We are and will always be devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. We'll see you in London. I think it's a fluid situation. And we're, we're I know you guys love it, especially Nagler. I can see you smirking at me right there. Uh, we're going to take it one day at a time. And, uh, <laughs> and just, it's going to be fluid, though. That's all I can tell you.